Somebody give the Lord a praise of thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you guys for being here tonight. So many are at home, got the pans and the pots rolling and the, everything else going on, out shopping. We thank you that you gave the time to come tonight. And for those of you that are watching us a live stream, uh, we thank you uh, that also you're investing your time tonight. And we believe that any investment in the kingdom of God is going to pay great benefits back toward you. All right. So God bless you. Thank you for joining us tonight. Give the Lord Jesus a great hand and you guys take your seats. And uh, let's hop into the word for a little bit. Uh, for we know that you guys are very busy physically and we want to keep you busy spiritually also. Uh, please open your Bibles up to Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. This is where we were Sunday. Uh, and we're just throwing some more on you tonight uh, to help you have a wonderful, whatever tomorrow is going to be for you. It might be a reunion with your family. You might be at home by yourself. Uh, you might be getting rest all day. I don't know. <laughs> some people some people have been working for so hard and so long that they might just take tomorrow and just say, you know something, we're just chilling. Whatever you're doing in life, Jesus has to be the center of it. All right? Uh, he's the one who gives us rest. He's the lifter up of our heads. He's the one who gives us a great day, for he's the one who lights our path, gives us light, and he gives us great understanding. So we might use the objects that are laid out before us to better influence our life and to greater influence the kingdom of God's life. So we thank you tonight, and as we get into the word of God, and this is a dynamic word because this is Jesus himself celebrating, all right? What he knows is going to take place uh, from men and women preaching the word of God. From men and women taking the word of God and standing on the word regardless of what's in front of them and, and, and it caused him, this, we're talking about Jesus now, it caused Jesus to be so excited. Now this is a man of sorrows. It has to take a whole lot of excitement to get Jesus excited because his whole life was dealing with sinners, people coming against him, lying, trying to manipulate him, undermine everything he did. In fact, it says it over in the book of Isaiah. Everything about his life was that he was going to be a man of sorrows. But this man of sorrows found one time to jump up and down and rejoice in spirit because of what was being revealed about the defeat of the enemy and men and women not now having to live enslaved to sin. Somebody say, thank God we don't have to be slaves to sin anymore. Amen? When Adam fell... All of us, we became slaves to sin. And so it was nothing about, it was, you couldn't do anything about what you were doing. You tried. All right, we got three people. You tried. You really tried to do your best, did you not? But how many of you know that without Jesus, it never was successful? You tried, you tried, you tried. But now with him, okay, we have the success because this free man set us free. So we were slaves, now we are free. Now we have this genuine uh, occupation of being thankful to him for what he's done, okay? And so we use this at this time because there's a natural Thanksgiving that's going on uh, all over this country. Uh, men and women, some of you tomorrow, y'all got that big turkey based in the oven, you know, and all them trimmings and all that stuff. Y'all, we're going to have to come in Sunday and have a scale up here <laughs> and, uh, you know, start weighing people and saying, okay, we got to get rid of this extra you know, but the deal is <laughs> sometimes in the traditional thing, we, we apply more effort to it than we do in the spiritual thing, all right? And this is why we're saying what we're saying tonight, that in everything and always, no matter what you're facing, okay, you have to realize what kind of a Christian are you? What type of a teabag are you as we use Sunday, all right? Are you the one that the water changes or are you the one that changes the water? Uh, you're going to have to figure that deal out and then advance yourself in knowledge, understanding, and wisdom so that you can always be prepared for no matter what happens in life, you're ready because the Christ in you lives big today. Amen? Amen. 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 So hunt somebody. Say, let's get turkey ready right now. All right. All right. So in Luke chapter 10, uh, we're reading this uh, uh, my wife always loved this, and, you know, she always used this years ago, and this was fitting to use because it shows how Jesus can rejoice. Now, if Jesus can rejoice, certainly you should be able to rejoice. 
You know, he was never in sin and he delivered us. And so because we are delivered from sin now and the master of sin, you and I should rejoice all the time. You know, everything don't work out for us all the time the way we want it to, right? That's because we have our own way that we want God to work things, all right? And sometimes our way, okay, gets in the way of God's way, okay? Because you know how persistent you are about you, about <laughs> You know how persistent you are about having your way, okay? And so sometimes you having your way can get in the way of God doing certain things. And this is why the, the first person that you need to eliminate from your future success is you. That's the first person. You eliminate you and put God first, then guess what? You got a great chance of, guess what, being very successful. But if you're first and then God's second or third or fourth, I'm telling you right now, you're going to have, you're going to wake up to a whirlwind every day. All right? It says this. Now, this is, this is powerful because every Christian person need to get this. You need to grip this and hold this, okay? He says, the 70 return, a return again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject to us through your name. The name of Jesus is the name. Luke chapter 10, all right? Again in verse 17, all right? Every person needs to know, every believer needs to understand the power of Jesus' name that you have available for you, okay? And he says this, and he said to them, I beheld Satan as lightning falling from heaven. That's fast, all right? And behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. You have to have that in your heart, especially in a day like today, because there are all kinds of things that would try to hurt you, all right? It may not put you into captivity, but it will try to hurt you, all right? And you need to know the name of Jesus and the word of God, and this is what causes thanksgiving to us, because no matter what happens, we are prevented from being hurt by things if we know and understand the power of his name that covers us, all right? Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice. I don't hear nobody saying nothing. Huh? <laughs> rejoice because your names are written in high. And it says in the same hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit. I mean, I would, oh man, could you imagine Jesus? I mean, Jesus, who's always dealing with everybody's problems, all of a sudden has, has moments when this particular moment, a certain moment, when he can rejoice in spirit. I mean, he's gone beyond what he knows. He's gone beyond what he feels. He's gone to the power of the man that he is now, and he's rejoicing in spirit. It's a wonder he didn't just start glowing right there, you know, like he did on the Mount of Transfiguration, because up there he just let it go. He was praying, and he just let it go, and it says that he just shone through his clothes. He was so bright, the glory of God in him, he's just shone. But here he's rejoicing, and you know how it is when you rejoice. I've seen some of you guys run. Y'all but ready to lose it, all right? <laughs> some of you guys praying and singing, you get into praise and worship, you but ready to lose it. Okay, well, what if Jesus had lost it right here, man? You know, everything would have been going boom. It would have just been an explosion of glory all over everybody. But he rejoiced in spirit to show us that you and I need to rejoice in spirit about the things that are revealed to us, all right? And, it, and this is a wonderful time. How many of you have given somebody something this week or since Sunday or you're planning to give somebody something tomorrow? You, you know, it's in your heart to do the best that you can do for somebody, okay? Everybody don't do the same thing because everybody doesn't have the same opportunity to give because guess what? Some people are more wealthy than some others, and so people that are poor do not have the opportunity to give than people that are rich or wealthier. Uh, but we all can give something. If it's no more than a prayer for somebody, if it's no more than, than just asking the Lord to bless that family or whatever, whatever, we can all do something. Can we not? Amen. And because we can, we can thank the Lord God. See, we can thank him that he's moved us from a place where we used to be the one with the hands out that now we're the ones who hold the hands out. Are you guys with me? We used to be the ones who, guess what, could, didn't, could, we couldn't think so well, but now because of our renewed minds, we think better, okay? And because of all these things, this is why we can always give God thanksgiving because he's transformed our life and the Holy Spirit is here sanctifying our life and all those little bad parts and all those little cracks and crevices in our life He's the one who's fixing all of that stuff up now, and he's not using a hammer and a nail. Guess what? He's using his spirit to fill our lives spiritually so that we can be tremendously blessed. You guys with me? Amen. All right. So we see that Jesus rejoiced. You should rejoice. 
We see that Jesus rejoiced. You should rejoice. Uh-huh. See, see, when you come in here, I rejoice just coming on this property. When I come over here in the mornings to pray, I be going like, Lord, you know what we've been through. I've got to sit here and thank you because you know. You know everything. You know stuff that we don't even know about what we went through. You know, people that were the very, the very knit Christians that came and used to tell me when we put the sign on the road, y'all ain't going to do nothing up here. Y'all not going to build it. I was going like, what are you talking about? You're the person supposed to, this should be encouraging us to take ground for the kingdom, and you're the one that's trying to discourage. I'm going like, what is, do you know Jesus? <laughs> because he's always expanding, all right? All right, so we're going to look at a psalm real quick, 105, please. Come on, go with me. I shared this with you Sunday. I told you you need to look at some of these psalms that talk about thanksgiving to the Lord because these people were in the same places that you and I have in life. Life hasn't changed much. It's just more people with more sin, you know? But people are still sinning. They were sinning in this day. They were murdering in this day. They were killing babies in this day. They were down in God in this day. They, they, the world hasn't been any different since Adam's fall. It's just more people doing it, okay? So when you get more people doing it, it seems like the devil is in charge, but he's not, all right? You're in charge. Look at somebody and say, Pastor, talking to you now. See, you're in charge. When you go in your house, you're in charge of your house, not the devil. All right, when you're in your car, you're in charge in your car, not the devil. That's why you can ride down the road and you can hear somebody pass by and they got the boom box going boom, 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 boom. And you sitting there thinking, you know, thinking about the Lord and thinking about how God has blessed you and getting you to where you're going. The angel sitting on the, on the hood of your car singing to you while you're going down the road, you know. Uh, um, what's the young man's name? Um, oh, who? Hilton Sutton. Hilton Sutton's grandfather, all right? Hilton Sutton's grandfather uh, was with Kenneth Copeland one day. Kenneth Copeland went to buy him a pair of shoes, took him to the shoe shop to get him a pair of shoes. And he says, now this is an old story, so I'm trying to make sure I get it all right. And he says that uh, he bought uh, Hilton Sutton's grandfather a pair of shoes, and when he, when he walked out of the, the store, uh, the, the Hilton Sutton's grandfather sit down on the bench and told the Lord, he says, Lord, now you're going to have to fix this so I can wear these shoes. And so he took his shoes off and he took his socks off. All right? He had corns on his toes. And he took his socks off and he turned them inside out and shook the corns out. <laughs> then put the socks back on and put the shoes on. And you know, again, here we go, thanksgiving to the Lord. <laughs> That'll make you thank the Lord when you see something like that happen. But then they were right. He said, this guy was sitting there. He was making all, he was just doing like this, singing and doing. He says, what, what are you singing? What are you doing? He says, an angel up there sitting on the hood of my car. He's singing, and I'm, I'm just going along with him and whatever, you know. See, I'm telling you, you have to understand there are dimensions of spiritual things happening around you every day that you don't even know this happening. Did not Jesus walk in the midst of the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Jewish people? Was he not here when John the Baptist told them, when they came and asked John, who are you? And he says, I am not the Christ, but I am this one, the voice of one crying in the world. And he says, there stands one among you who you don't even know. Heaven was right there in the midst of them, and they didn't even know heaven was here. Heaven was walking around them. They never even knew that heaven was in the midst of them. You don't know who's around you when you're going around in there. That's why you need to be thankful every day that no matter what's going on, because there could have been an angel that did this for you or stopped this over here. You don't know what's going on around you. God didn't stop when Jesus went to the cross from filling the earth with his presence. He has more stuff going on now than has ever been going on. And so if Jesus could walk around and nobody knew who he was, I can tell you right now, there are angels and people that are assign have assignments on your life and for you that are walking around you all the time just waiting for a door to open up so they can pour out on you what belongs to you. You guys here tonight? Amen. See, this is why we are very thankful. The life that we have, it supersedes the normal reasonings that we have of natural things. See, it goes beyond that. The revelations that God give us, the signs and wonders that he show us all the time. You know, you just came in the night and you told me, you know, praying for, praying for those three young men. 
Nobody knew where they were. And she walks in the night, she says, I've got a great testimony. One of those, the youngest one, which was gone the longest, says, come back home. You know, and I'm going like, praise the Lord. You know, because we pray. You know, when we ask people to give us things to pray for, we love to hear people come back and say, this happened, that happened, why? Because we are praying. We come here and pray. You know, if I'm not here, Pastor Milton's here, Pastor Pearl, I mean, Dr. Pastor Pearl. <laughs> Pastor Pearl. Dr. Ellis here. You know, we're all over the place because we understand that prayer can cause people to laugh. You can sit back and laugh later on at a situation that God reversed. Are you guys here with me tonight? Yeah. In Psalms 105, the very first verse says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Call upon his name. You know, El Elyon, Jehovah Jireh. You know, we can call him Jehovah Tescanu. We, yeah. we can call him all kinds of, why? Because of certain things that he's done in our life, we know that this name represents that character form that he presented in our life. We can go around and tell him, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, my healer. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to praise you, Lord, because you're my healer. Thank See, you. when you talk about healing, you have to stay in present faith, not, 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 not future vision. All right? Future vision says, well, the Lord's going to heal me. Something's going to happen later on. That's future vision. Present faith says, I'm healed now. By his stripes, I'm healed now. I can praise him right now because I'm healed now. See, once that becomes a reality to you, then the manifestation happens in your life. Present faith versus future vision. All right? You got to stay away from future vision. Future vision was the Old Testament. They look futuristic toward Jesus coming and doing all these things. And then by the time he got here, they had been so futuristic, they had trained themselves to stay in the future. They never had any present faith that he's now, he's here with us. When they talked to John the Baptist, there were priests, there were Levites, there were men and women that were sent, well, there were men that were sent from, from Jerusalem to talk to John, to question him, because John was from the lineage of Aaron. So when he was from the lineage of Aaron, only the priests had the right to come and talk to him in the first place, to question him about why he was doing certain things, all right? And so what he, what he explained to them was this. He says, I'm not the one that, that you should be expecting. He's already here. See, the Old Testament was telling him he was coming. He's already here. So while you constantly, the time is at hand, while you're still looking futuristic. See, it's, it's the paradigms that we grow up with that keep us from knowing and understanding things. And then when it comes down to thanking God, you ought to thank him for everything you got. I mean, if you ate this morning, do you know how many people in this world didn't have a meal this morning? May not have a meal tonight, all right? You don't, you don't realize that. You know, when we used to travel around all the time, you know, and I met these kids from down in, uh, in South America. They're from Miami, but they worked in South America, down in Argentina. They was telling us about the kids that they used to go and get out of the, out of the, the dump fields, the, the, the trash piles and stuff, sleeping in bags and stuff and whatever. And when they see you coming, they would run because people had abused them, raped little boys and little girls. And so when they saw grown-ups coming, they would run from them. Why? You coming to help, but they have this paradigm that these people, they are only here to abuse me. See, everybody don't have it the way you have it. Everybody don't have it. You going home tonight. You're probably going to lay down in a nice warm bed, you know, and dream about Jesus. <laughs> There's some kids out there somewhere tonight that's in the cold and all night long, they're going to be struggling just to stay warm. See, you got a lot to be thankful for. This is why the psalmist is saying, oh, give thanks to the Lord. Bless his name. You don't know and you won't know until you get to glory, the full extent of God's keeping you. You won't know. All the people that passed by that had the mind to kill themselves and to run into you and doing it so that they could get out of here and how God kept you or how God keeps you on your job or how he protects your mind from, from onslaughts of the enemy coming to oppose your mind and oppose the, the will of God that's in your life. You don't know what God has done for you until we get to glory, but we do know that we are here now. We do know that we are kept now so we can praise him no matter what's going on. Regardless of what I'm believing for, I'm gonna praise him for what I have. 
And right now, guess what? I praise him, Lord God, because you're keeping me. And I got a sound mind, Lord. I can move, I can walk, I can work, I can do things. I'm, keeping, I'm kept by your power. I can thank him now for those things. And then when he brings those special things, then you can take off and run and run out of your shoes. But this is the thing that opens the door for favor. It's when you thank God, even when he's not doing something special for you, you get his attention. Amen. Daddy God, I'm just here to let you know I'm going to love on you a little bit this morning. Don't go nowhere. I know you got to run all over the universe, but I need to give you a big hug. <laughs> it says, sing unto him. Oh, let's back up. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. That's not the banker's name, all right? His name. And make known his deeds among the people. In other words, tell somebody what God's done for you. Huh? Tell somebody how good he's been to you. You know, everything is not the same when you are younger and when you get older. We've got life to live. And in the midst of life, a lot of things can happen. Anybody ever been there? A lot of things can happen in the midst of life. But in the midst of life, guess what? We got a story that becomes a testimony. And Jesus got the glory, which again fills up his life and causes him now to do more things for you. If you think that what you got last year was good, let me tell you something. As my grandfather used to say, it's going to get gooder and gooder and gooder because you thank God all the time for where you are and what he's doing for you. Sing unto him. Woo! I think they wrote that for my wife. Sing psalms unto him and talk you of all his wondrous works. I mean, the things that you saw that happened that nobody could do but God. Lord, I got to talk about that because what you talk about expands. See, when you start talking about poverty, poverty expands. When you start talking about righteousness and holiness, it expands. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. You ever seen that balloon that started you blowing up? And you know that balloon can't handle but so much. And you keep blowing in it. <laughs> And you look at it, and it's gotten tight, and you go, and you blow a little bit more, and you know that balloon, that balloon is right there at the edge of boom, boom. Well, see, this is the way it is when you're praising God. God starts blowing favor on you, you know? And guess what? You, you keep on praising. He said, because you can't outgive him, so guess what? You give him glory, he's got to give you something in return. So guess what? You keep on, and he keep on blowing on you, and after a while, guess what? You blow out. You go boom, you go out, and you go like, oh, my Lord. <laughs> Sometimes I walk upstairs, my wife, she be in it, boy. She be in the music. She be, oh, she be gone. She don't know I'm standing there. You know, I'm just standing there going like, oh, boy. <laughs> Is she going to wrap you out here tonight or something? <laughs> but giving Thanksgiving, why? Because it's in us. As Jesus told Nicodemus, he says, those that are born of the flesh are of the flesh. But those that are born of the Spirit are of the Spirit. And because you're born of the Spirit, nobody can handle you. Because they don't know where you're coming from. And they don't know where you're going. Because you're living, you're being led by the Spirit of God. So you might break out, you might be in the post office. <laughs> you might be in the post office. <laughs> you might be in the post office and break out. and Everybody's going like, whoa, what's going on here? Because you broke out. Guess what? Because you were being led by the Spirit of God. Just give him praise right now. Because it's not for you. It's for somebody back there that need it. They need to hear, they need to hear that I'm here so that they can have some hope for tomorrow or get out of that situation. A lot of times God will just use you so that he can get to somebody else. You know? And you got to be ready for that. Okay? You got to be open for that. I mean, not just ready. You know, you prayed up. You ready to go. But guess what? You got to be open when he says, this is who I want you to go talk to. Or go speak to that person. Pray over them right now. You know? That's why when you go up and down the road, and particularly right now, you got all kinds of people out there today and tomorrow. Guess what? In the shopping centers tonight, where you can pull up in the shopping center and you can say, Lord, I'm praying for all of them. You got a whole congregation here. I'm praying for all of them. There's hundreds of them in the store, Lord. I'm praying for all of them right now that the power of Jesus Christ will draw them, Lord God, in some situation tonight 
that while they're in this place and while they're walking here, that guess what? Something about your kingdom is going to attach itself to them so that when tomorrow when we talk, start talking about Thanksgiving, they're going to get a new revelation of what Thanksgiving is all about. And they're going to praise you for the first time because guess what? We, gotta, we are part of God's forever family. We got to keep on growing. Amen. How, do we, how do we grow our family? By bringing them to Jesus. Huh? We grow our family. We are part of God's forever family family. He says this, glory you in his holy name. He who was and is and is to come. As the creature said, holy, holy, holy. That was the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Who was and is and is to come. That means he's everywhere all the time. He can't, be, he can't be locked in the past. He can't be locked in the future. And he can't be stifled right now. He's everywhere. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And when you stand up in, in the face of challenges and you start talking about how holy God is, every challenge has to now bow its knee because it understands that it has no power against the name of Jesus. It has no power against the holy God. It knows that. But you got to know that. And this is why you got to have this thanksgiving in you. You might be going through pain right now. Keep on thanking God. You might not have the resources that you want to have. All right. But keep on thanking God. All right. Because God is the God of reversal. He can reverse things for you. He can make things that used to stand like this and used to have a foundation like this. He can get right under it and cause the foundation to go right straight down in the ground like he did the city of Jericho. He can drop things that seem like walls around you. He can drop them out of your way so that you can continue to go forward. But you got to have some thanksgiving. You got to have this life that I'm going to praise God no matter what's going on inside, outside, no matter what's going on in family, church, business, or whatever. However, I still have this mind to thank God for what he's done. He made me a part of his creation. He made me to, to be the place where I can be in this generation and enjoy the end time of the, of, the, of the last age of mankind in sin. This is the power that God has given to you and I, that you and I now can able to be able to stand up and say, Lord, I got a revelation this morning. He said, what did you get, son? And you tell him, you said, no, you know what it was. You gave it to me. Come on, let's talk about this. Then you have a conversation. Prayer is conversation. It is not the thing that we just said what we want, and then we just, okay, Lord, you got it? You get the memo? You know, that's not that. No. How great is it to use the name of Jesus and to come to the eternal God? whose spirit, and when he speaks, his word causes creation of things based on his thoughts. How great is it to come to him in the name of Jesus, who made everything, every angel, every level of heaven, even, even made hell for the devil and his angels. How great is it to come to him and to thank him that he saved you that he's given you a life above the ordinary. Glory, yeah? you, that you can call on him whenever you need him for anything. Come on, go with me to the book of Luke real quick. I, I should just keep on with Psalms 105 because it, all it talked about is just talking about being thankful to the Lord. All right? Luke, let me get over here. Come on here, my smartphone. Get, get, get. This is my smartphone. Luke 24. The amazing thing that Jesus has done for us. You know? And, and again, this is a present faith deal. Faith is when? Now. Now faith is. That's a present faith. Now faith is. When we walk in a present faith, it, it opens up the structure of your understanding to see what God's done for you. So that you don't walk around and, you know, like Psalms 30, 35, 37 talks about fret not thyself because of evildoers. They've been here all the time. You know, they've been here since Adam's day. His first son was evil. You know, Cain was evil. So evil has been here since, the, since they were pushed out of the garden. But the deal is, God's been here too. See, and I'm more interested in the Lord than I am in evil. 
See, because being interested in him, it prepares you for, for the age to come. See, and you got to get your mind set on how it's going to be so that when you get there, you don't have to go to school. All right? They got kindergarten, heaven, first kindergarten. <laughs> they got, they have kindergarten, first grade, then we're going through, through all those classes in, in heaven so that you might recognize where you are. Can you imagine the people that have gotten there that they're going like, man, they, I, nobody ever told me this when I was in church. Nobody ever told me about the kingdom of God. Nobody ever told me about this Jesus. And he's going like, okay, we got to send you over there. All right, I got a teacher over there. And you go over there and there's this little child over there. And you go, where's my teacher? Here I am. I've been here for 700 years. I have knowledge of the kingdom. I'm, go, I'm assigned to teach you. Look at this. This is, this is, again, I'm just pulling out things why you can praise him, all right? Mm. Verse 25. This is him on the road to Emmaus when Jesus tells him, he says, verse 25, O oh, fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. He says, ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? In other words, Jesus had told his disciples, with great desire, I have desired to have this Passover because he knew where he was going. He knew what he had to do, and he knew what was going to happen. He was always thankful that he had this particular purpose before him. And it says this. He said at meet, verse 30, with them, and it says, uh, you know, and he sat at meat with them and he took the bread and he blessed it and broke it and gave it to them and their eyes were opened and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight. Now ain't that a powerful body? That I can sit down and eat with you, then I can leave without opening the door. <laughs> but this is you. You got to get this. Because this is why he suffered. Verse 36 and as they thus spoke, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said unto them, Peace be unto you. They were terrified and fearful and supposed that they had seen a what? A spirit, a ghost, as they sit down in the country. A ghost. <laughs> All right, a spirit. And he said unto them, Why are you troubled and why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit have not flesh and bones as you see me have. In other words, Jesus is presenting his body to them so that they may know that the resurrection was not the spirit of Jesus. It's the man. See, because... People understand that spirits don't have flesh and bone. They're just spirit. But he's showing them his body. And he's, he's letting them know, this is what I did. I'm not ashamed of my sufferings for you. All right? And I want you to see this because you're going to have one just like this. You're going to have one that's going to be just like this. It's not going to be his, but it's going to be in the order of his. And he's showing them, he's saying, look at my hands, look at my feet. You're going to have hands and you're going to have feet. You're not going to just be some spirit and sitting on some cloud talking about thank you, playing a harp. God has prepared. See, I thank him that he is for the body because the body is for the Lord. I thank him all the time that he's going to give us a body like his that we're going to be able to come and live with him for eternity. Without death, pain, without all the stuff that we're going through now, you, you ought to be, see, this prepares you for the world to come, for the age to come. Not just thinking about what you're going through now. What did I say Sunday? The best way to go through something is to go through. Go on through, you know, and get on through so that we can get to what he wants us to have. He says this, behold my hands, my feet, 
that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit have not flesh and bones as you see me have. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. In other words, he's saying, come on, make some contact with me so that you know I'm a real person. I'm not some spirit. I'm not some ghost. I'm a real person. And I'm representing you in glory as man with God now. Reconciled to God, redeemed now. And I'm the man that's standing with you. And I'm the man that's standing with God so that all of us can become one. See, you got a lot to be thankful for. You know, you got a lot to thank him for every day. Lord, I thank you. The new, oh, the new age that we're going to live in, Lord, we're going to have a time, Lord God. We're not going to get tired. You're going to be able to take off and run when Jesus say, this is going to happen. You're going to go like, where's the Milky Way? Boom, and you're gone. You're going to take off and run, and you're not going to get tired. And you're going to roll back in, and you're going to go like, my God, no tiredness. Can you imagine? Woo, when you get past 16, you start getting tired. And it says, and while, and while they yet believed not for joy and wondered, he said unto them, have you here any meat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and of, of a honeycomb, and he took it and did eat before them. Why? Because he's letting them know what I am you shall be. See? And so whatever you're going through now, it ain't going to last forever because this is where we're headed, to a glorified body, to the place where, again, can you imagine a world with no pain? Nobody crying because somebody hurt them. Nobody crying because somebody hurt them, abused them. Nobody's crying. See, we got so much to be thankful for. Yeah, we, we're living in a fallen world, and we know it's fallen because it's carrying a whole lot of people down. We know that, and we understand that. But we also know that wherever we are in this fallen world, we can always look up because heaven's always up. We can always look up. And so tomorrow, when you guys are cutting your turkey, pouring your gravy, eating your pie, getting a little fatter, when you guys are welcoming people to your homes and whatever, or you're going to somebody's home, always remember, this might be the last time you see them. You and I live in an age now where we may say something and may not ever get to see or say anything to that person again. You and I live in a time, all right, where all of us are seeing people leaving this world, and it's our prayer all the time, thank God for God's forever family, that they're going to be with God. They're going to be with Daddy God because we'll see them one day. Those who left here sick, those who left here under certain things that were going on with their body or whatever, we're going to see them. They're going to be standing up like Jesus, and they're going to ask you when you get there, they're going to say, you got a piece of broil, your fish, some honeycomb? You got something to eat? I'm kind of hungry today. <laughs> Jesus was showing them the reality of who he is, that he can get hungry, that he can eat. See, he's showing them this body that you and I have. Oh, when I read stuff like this, it makes me just want to jump over chairs because I know that he gave his life, his suffering for us so that we could live this way. And then we got people that walk around and always complain, I'm just going through this. It's just so bad. I don't know what I'm going to do, whatever. I know what you're going to do. You're going to join us with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And we're going to bless the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because when Jesus transformed that body, you're going to be going like, oh, my Lord. What it is to feel good for the first time in my life. No pain, no tears, no hearing bad news. Mm. Not even bad news about the enemy. Because he ain't going to be nowhere near us. Not even hearing about people going off and doing this and doing that. We, our ear is not going to be called for that anymore. Our ears are going to be called for somebody coming up to you and say, you met Jesus today? You talked to Jesus today? Did you see Jesus today? What did Jesus tell you today? What did he say about this? How's your house that he built? What, 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 what did he assign you to do? How many gifts did he give you? Oh, how many crowns do you have? What, what, what did he write about you in the book of life? What, you're, going to, you're going to be so busy with all the billions of people. That ain't counting the angels that are there. They can tell you what it was to be free and never to be a slave to sin. Those who never fell, they can tell you 
How was it that you got redeemed? Because they never were. They never had the pain of sin. So you're going to be very interesting to them. What's your story? What did Jesus do for you? And then you're going to say, oh, you got, you got about a thousand years? Because <laughs> this is going to take a while. <laughs> you, got, you got a little time? Because this is going to take a while. You know, it's so much that we have to be thankful for. So we ought to let him know always. Lord, I just love you, and I just want you to know I am very grateful for what you've done for me. Was it always easy, Lord? You knew it wouldn't be. You didn't tell me that it would be, but you told me that you'd never leave me nor forsake me. So I always have the availability of your favor. Thank you for your care and your life, and I bless you. Holy, holy, holy is the, hallelujah. Psalm 106, then I'm going to let you guys go home. Psalms 106 is right after 105. <laughs> oh, boy, verse 1. You there? Thank you guys for praising the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Glory, hallelujah. And oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. For he is good. Yes. And his mercy hallelujah. endureth forever. Who can utter the mighty acts of the Lord? <laughs> and who can show forth all his praise? Blessed are they that keep judgment and he that doeth righteousness at all times. Lord, remember me. <laughs> Lord, remember me. Remember me, Lord. That's why I give you thanks. This is why you and I, not only tomorrow should we just have a traditional Thanksgiving, but we should have a spiritual one. All right, those that are born of the Spirit are led by the Spirit. Those that are born in the flesh are led by the flesh. We all were led by the flesh, but now we're led by the Spirit. And because we're led by the Spirit, somebody in this house tonight, I don't know who you are, but somebody's got something special to thank God for. Because the last breath you took you didn't purchase it. You didn't buy it at all. Hmm? The next step that you take, heartbeat, guess what? You didn't design it at all. All right? And the sleep that you have tonight, there was somebody who, guess what, who wakes up old sleepers. All right? Because there's work to be done. He'll keep you. All right? Let's stand. Now, you go on and bless him. And thank him because this is the day that the Lord has made. I can thank him just for that, you know, because he made this day and this day is special. But I can thank him for what he's going to use me to do tomorrow. Because as he gives time, he gives grace. And as he gives grace, grace upon grace or grace for grace, that grace accompanies more grace because we're willing to hand out great grace to other men and women, boys and girls. And so as you plan to give and to do certain things tomorrow for other people, God will give you more grace to help even that grace that you're handing out in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So you and I are favored, blessed, and I like to use this word highly favored because we, our favor comes from on high. All right, so we are highly favored. And we bless the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you tonight for creation. You made it to bring pleasure to you. And because it was, the functionality of it was lost through Adam's treason, you sent forth your dream to us, Jesus Christ. 
we thank you tonight for the power of redemption and the recovering, Lord God, of all that was lost. For Jesus has done a great work in redeeming us to you. We thank you that your honor has been restored, that you lose nothing of your creation. And we bless you and thank you tonight that as we enjoy every breath of every day and every, oh Lord God, every moment of thinking that we have, we surrender, Lord God, to you that the establishment of our feet might live holy and righteous before you and that the fruit of our life, Lord God, might bring glory to your great name. We thank you tonight in this house for it is a time of thanksgiving, spiritual thanksgiving from within, Lord God, because you've been so good to us and even give us hints of how great things shall be. So we bless you tonight. Thank you for the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. He presented himself to show us, Lord, that we were headed for greatness. No matter what it seems like in this earth today, we have the privilege to open up our mouths and to thank you. For you are the Lord God and you are worthy of all our praise. In Jesus' name we bless you. Amen and amen and amen and amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Somebody imprint that on y'all pies tomorrow. Put hallelujah on your pies. All right. Well, you guys that have bought your tithes, offerings, and all that good stuff, those of you, thank you for being with us tonight. We pray and ask you to be a blessing to somebody tomorrow and every day, and we'll see you Sunday, amen, because we're believing for you. God bless you.